Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to cut, shorten, and tilt spindles. Um, so I got this one ready to cut, but I'll show you what I did on this one to get it, just so everything gets even. So I got this level right here that I take pictures of this angle, 7.5, and then I need to tilt that uh, seven degrees. So it'll be 0.5 when I cut it. This right here, is at about 90, so after I after I cut it, I have to make sure that that's back at 90 because then that'll keep this piece correct because I got that also to uh, 90 as well, or 0.3, kind of kind of messes around a little bit, but so yeah, I'm gonna get this one cut. I just kind of got this piece of metal in there and it's flat there and those are all against the ground and I measured that and that's at 90 degrees so, so uh, you've got to like kind of lay it out where you want to cut it but yeah I'm gonna go get this one cut okay so I got that piece cut and next up, I'm going to be adjusting the bevel of this to seven degrees because that's the tilt that we want out of it. So I got this bevel square right here set to seven degrees. And uh, I'm going to get that set real quick. So I got this thing set. Touching. So uh, next, I got to get that reset up and uh, cut. All right, so I got this set up. It's inch and a quarter shortened, but because it's at an angle, I'm lining it up with the front of it, so it's going to be an inch and a quarter short and up front, and then tilted to seven degrees. So, I guess we'll get start cutting. This next one's a little bit trickier because I can't just let it down on those because of the where the tie rod goes into. So I got the level here and I just clamped it and it says uh, zero. I got something under there so that won't drop down at all when the blade goes on it and uh, should make a good cut. And then I've got the mark where I want it. Look at the blade, it's right there. So I want to keep that mark when I cut it. So I got the spindle all cut up, and uh, well, here it is. These are the two extra pieces that were cut, and uh, they're pretty even. This one looks like maybe like a 64th of an inch taller, um, but not much. So that's good, so they should be pretty even. So next up, I'm going to grind them down or bevel them a lot. And I might start welding them today, but I might not. I might just uh, do all the welding tomorrow. We'll see. I got these spindles beveled and cleaned up a little bit. All good. I already measured everything to make sure that it's going to be good. Um, but I got to call it a night because I got to... I gotta go feed some dogs. So um, I'll be back here tomorrow morning to finish everything up. Tomorrow's Easter, so hopefully um, I'll just get here and weld it quick and uh, chill the rest of the day. But yeah, see you in a sec. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm back to get these welded. I got everything beveled and cleaned up really well. So I just gotta get these placed. I got these things squared up uh, it bounces back from that to 90 this one is square as well so well it they kind of move a little bit here and there but um so yeah I'm gonna get these things placed where they got to go and preheated and tack welded and uh, yeah so I'll uh, show it to you once everything's kind of in All place right, so I got this up right now it's, it's pointing at point two and it still needs to tilt forward 
but beforehand the, de the degree was 7.5 and it's needed to tilt this way. So that gave us a 7.3 degree tilt. I measured this one yesterday and it was a 7.4 degree tilt. So um, I'll just kind of get tack it on one side to try to get them exactly the same. Uh, this is at zero as well, how it's supposed to be, because that is at 90, that should be at zero. Um, I'm gonna get this one kind of set up, but I think I might tack this guy first, just so I can get those levels, because these don't actually sit up themselves, so the levels are actually giving it the, the right forward leaning weight to stay standing. So I think I'm gonna get that heated up and tack welded really quick. So I got this one all tacked up and the level stayed at 0.2 and zero. I just got a big tack laid on all four corners. So I'm gonna get this one done and make sure that that's about 7.3 degrees, just so if I need to adjust one of them, I don't have to cut too much of a weld off. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this one heated up and or adjusted first and then tack welded. All right, so I got this one uh, placed. The way that I'm figuring out where it is this way is I use, put that onto there, and I measure from this corner, and I got about a quarter inch on each one. And then uh, we're at point one there, which that's where it was on the first measurement. Right now it's uh, point five. Before it was at 6.6 .6 the other way. So 6.6 .6 plus set point five is gonna be uh, 7.1 degrees so I need it to tilt this way a little bit more so I'm just gonna put a couple tack welds there and then um, see if I can get that to hold on the back side so it stays so my goal here is to get that to about 0.8 degrees and we should be good so we'll, uh, well, I see. love it when stuff works out how I want it to it ended up at 0.8 degrees there is a slightest gap there, but I'm just gonna get it welded over here first and keep the level on it while I'm welding it. But for to the rest of just today, it is Easter right now, so I don't wanna spend too much time. I'm just gonna get it welded all the way around on both sides, and then tomorrow I'll come in and plate it. I'm gonna be plating, I'm gonna put a plate on this side, a plate over here, and possibly a plate yeah I'm gonna put a plate right there as well um, yeah I just want it as strong as I can still at point eight so I'm gonna get these things welded up and then call it a day and then uh, probably tomorrow after work I'll just put the plates on really quick and they're all done so so I got this one welded all the way around um, the way that I'm doing it, since cast aluminum is kind of dirty, sorry, it was a speck on the screen. Since cast is kind of dirty, I go over it really hot with no filler and just kind of layer over it, and that'll clean out the weld. Aluminum, you can clean it just with the with with the uh, the torch hand. So you just kind of go a couple passes over it, that cleans all the impurities out, and then you can get a really nice clean weld that looks like that or like that. And when you don't do that, you kind of get some some specks and stuff. So I didn't I didn't have a good angle, so I uh, wasn't able to clean as well on this side, but that's the side that the plate's gonna be on, so it, that's perfectly okay. Um, it ended up at 0.7, which gives us, for this spindle, it's gonna be a 7.3 degree tilt. So I'm gonna just try to match that with this one as I get that welded. So uh, I'm gonna weld that side when the spindle's unclamped, but I just wanted to make sure everything was perfectly in line before I take it off and uh, go freehand. So next up, I'm gonna reheat this one up because I haven't heated it up in about 20 minutes. Heat it up and get to weld it. So first I'm gonna go with no filler. I'm, I'm doing the other side. I, I can't, I don't want anyone to hold the camera for me. So, but I'm gonna do a pass with just the torch. Uh... 
Okay, now that's all cleaned up and now I'll go with the filler pass. On the other side, I'll show you guys what it looks like after the clean. So it did tilt a little bit with that weld, so I'm going to weld this front side first. Um, see, it's kind of hard. I don't want to move this, but I also don't want to have a hard, kind of a tricky weld, so um, I might just go left-handed on this one. That should work. Alright, uh, I think that's getting a little bit hot, so luckily I got the other level to double check, but I just gotta go to the, to the, we got this piece over there that's perfectly square, so we just set the level on it and reset it, so I'll have to do that in just a minute, but for now, I'm gonna see if, yep, two, So I got that at point two, which is where it was. So currently they are all, they're both welded at exactly 7.3 degrees. So I'm gonna get this one, I'm gonna clean it off and I'll show you guys what it looks like, but the after effect is this. Um, once I do that first like clean, nice weld, then they'll start to look more shiny like that. So I'm gonna, so after the clean, it looks like that just, no more dark spots or black specks in there. So I'm gonna get it welded and show you again. This is after. Kind of dull, so I'm gonna do a pass all around every side besides there. So I'm gonna do a pass all around, show you guys again. Okay, so I got uh, the second pass. I just did one and then two. All around stayed at point two there so pretty happy that everything's exactly the same so what I'm gonna do is unclamp them weld the other side do maybe one more pass all the way around and then uh, call it a day and tomorrow or in a couple days after work I'll get the plates welded on all right so I got everything uh, welded up I still got a plate but to be honest plating there's not much to it besides cutting a plate, making it in that direct, in that general shape and welding a full weld all around it. Same thing there. And then welding a plate on that side. So I think I'm going to end the video here. So this is the spindle shortening and tilting of for a G37 infinity, uh, same exact spindles as a 370 and super similar to the Nissan 350 and G35 spindles. So, uh, I guess if anyone is watching this and needs it done, let me know. But uh, this is, that's how even they came out. I mean, perfect. 
They're a little like touch off there, but everything looks really good. So I appreciate you guys watching. On the this is like my first uh, instructional video, I guess, on something about fabricating. So I might be doing some more videos on custom fabricating some arms. Uh, this is for a set of lower control arms for a Saab 9.3. These are extended one inch and it's supposed, it's gonna hopefully help the axle bind that, that you get. It's very common for Saab 3s that the axles go out when you lower the car like, like an inch, the axles start going out. So this is gonna be the first set of extended lowers on any Saab in at least the United States. Um, so hopefully that fixes it, then that'll kind of help a lot of other Saab owners. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace out.